It is almost here. The 10th Annual Annapolis Film Festival opens up on Thursday, March 31st in Annapolis and rolls on for four solid days. This year, the festival features more than 70 films along with dozens of panels, Q&A sessions, and yes, the parties. Tickets and passes are available at annapolisfilmfestival.org. But right now, we're hanging with the two visionaries that brought this festival to Annapolis 10 years ago. What's in store for these four magical days? Have a listen. Valentino looks very much alike. And he looks up ladies' dresses as they sadly pass him by. But please don't tread on dearest Marilyn, cause she's not very tough. She should have been made of iron or steel, but she was only made of flesh and See all the stars as you walk down Hollywood Boulevard Some that you recognize and that you hardly even heard of Man, I can't tell you how happy I am to be sitting here in this cramped little room on West Annapolis uh, with Lee and Patty who are with the Annapolis Film Festival. And first of all, I gotta say, welcome the hell back. <laughs> Thank you, John. We're, and we're going to say how sweet it is to be back. Oh, my word. You know, what a hellacious couple of years for the Annapolis Film Festival. And I have told so many people that this is my favorite, I would say week, because it's not really quite a week, but of the year when the film festival rolls in town, because I totally clear the calendar. I totally play hooky. I, you know, this is this is what I do for four days at the end of March, the beginning of April. But this is an even more special year. Because this is the Big Ten. I remember sitting here in year five and you were going, you know, if we make it through five, we're kind of like on, you know, people know about us. <laughs> and here we are five years later through a damn pandemic. Right. Celebrating year 10. So congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Thanks. And to the whole community for supporting us through it all. Well, uh, you know, I, I don't want to dwell on last year and the year before, but, you know, you were shut down what, two weeks before? Nine, nine days. Okay. Um, and somehow figured out how to make it work. Yes. Uh, it had bumps. It did. You know? and We're grateful for the grace everybody gave us for that. Yeah. And and last year, well, everybody knew. I mean, come on. But and last year was, was you know, fabulous. I mean, the thing that was that stunk about last year um, was that you didn't get the camaraderie. You didn't get the, the neighborhood, yes. the, the, the back slapping, the, oh, my God, you're here. I haven't seen you for a year type. You know, and the and, filmmakers coming in, you didn't get that. Yeah. So in the live parties and yeah. just you're right, though, it is a community film festival. It always has been. Mm -hmm. It's been built from the ground up by, by caring individuals that donate their time, their money, their resources. And without that, we would never would have survived this long. Well, congratulations. Well, here we are 10 years. This is a big anniversary, isn't it? It's the big picture year. That's why we're, our theme is the is that, big is that, picture. Okay, that's why I was going to ask what the theme was. Because, I mean, I know that Joe had, um, I, I saw Joe Parsons' artwork, and it's just wonderful. It's incorporating all of the uh, previous nine years Yes. Uh, in it. Yeah. And it's um, just well, absolutely wonderful. We picked the big picture because we are, it's our year back, and it's our 10th year. And it's also um, a year that we want to be back on the big screen. So it's literally the big picture coming back to the big screen. And you it's also always do figuratively. Fun, fun themes. You always figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So this year is like 
our scrapbook. It's like a look forward and a look back. If you see the poster Joe design, you see moments from years past. You see Rob Reiner with the youngest mm -hmm. filmmaker that mm -hmm. year, Joanne Froggett stepping out of a mm -hmm. Porsche or, you Just know, our people in our community. Or the people standing in front of the step and repeat at a party, taking a snap or some of the filmmakers, you know. So we're, we're looking forward and looking back, but we just are so excited about this milestone that this sort of became part of the theme. We also want to look at through a lens that incorporates some different ideas. Like we want to look at some of the bigger stories in the world through a maybe more personal, intimate lens. And we want to look at some of the smaller stories in a, through a larger lens. So we're, we're t flipping things around and trying to find our way to the big picture. Great. Well, I, I'm kind of excited because you just released recently within the last couple of days of us recording this, uh, the slate of films. And I got a question for you. Why is it not called like a bill or a lineup? Why is it called a slate? Is there a reason? I think that a film slate has always been the term is that, the, that festivals is that the use. Well, comes down? Uh, that's a clapboard. Okay. But it's a clapper, a clapboard, but... A, a slate is just a list. Okay. And the, in the film world, slates are what, you know, the, your lineup, so to speak. Okay. It's what well, it is. Well, you, you have released the slate of films that mm -hmm. are, are going with this. And some of them are really exciting. I mean, I, was, I got a chance. They just sort of came out on the website and they're still sort of filling in the blanks. And uh, it's no big surprise because you guys do such a great job of curating these things year after year after year after year. Um, and, you know, the opening night is To Olivia, which is a, is, I guess, is it a documentary? I mean, it's... No, oh, heck no. no. It's, it's a, a big feature. narrative feature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that's uh, about Roald Dahl. Right. Yeah. Roald yeah. Dahl. And, and Patricia Neal. Yeah. 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 So that's uh, that's exciting. And it's a, it's a slice of time in their lives. It's not their right. whole story, but it's a period of time in their lives when they have to meet certain... Um, have challenges and and um, their life in England and and it's just fascinating and it's also nostalgic you know right. so there's a little bit of British and a little bit of old Hollywood in this film mm -hmm. and there's a lot of chocolate yeah yeah, yeah. well I, I I know I sense the theme there because you got the, <laughs> right. the closing day day <laughs> film is chocolate is piece by chocolate now have you ever had a closing day film mm -hmm. before we yes. have but we've never advertised it as, as I mean we call it our closing day film but um, since. Since we're doing Best of Fest Sunday night, we like to have a closing day instead of a closing night film. Okay. And we want people to go out to that and then take a little break and then go and watch oh, our awards best. and the Best of Fest and just make it a full on, you know, movie thon on that day. So, but, and our theme, it's to, we're opening with chocolate, a theme of chocolate and sweetness, bringing sweetness back into everybody's life. And no, we're we closing. Don't need any, we don't need any of that. <laughs> We don't need that. And we're closing with it because both of them are wonderful films that uh, just happen to hit on that theme. So as you can imagine, we will have a little taste of that at our after party. <laughs> a little taste, and, little taste of chocolate. Yeah. I'll, and I'll, I'll, actually, it's going to be a great opening night. I is. mean, we're doing something really different this year. We're putting a tent on the front lawn of Maryland Hall. So we have a, you know, for those that are sponsors and patrons at a certain level get to come to a pre-reception as people gather to see the red carpet. Our red carpet is now 40 feet long this year instead of 20 feet wow. covered. Mm -hmm. And um, and then when people come out of the opening night film, they just walk down the steps and go back to the tent for the after party. And we're all right there. Oh, the, the party, the after party is going to be there, right so there. with a dance floor and the whole bed and, and a band. And it's going to be fantastic. Oh, that's 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 awesome. I mean, I know in years past you've had it up at the, the Boys and Girls Club. At the Boys and Girls Club. Much just made sense it. this year. Well, this it, well, year. it does, because I remember a couple of years ago, it was like, OK, we let's do the sprint from Maryland Hall. If we yeah. can't get a get an Uber or we couldn't drive and, and, and it's not that far. It's like, no. oh, it's farther than I thought. But let's, <laughs> you know, let's let's take it. That makes all the sense. And also opening night, we're bringing in the director of the film and the producer from London. Um, so they're, they're going to be here. And, and, of, and of course, Joe Newmeyer will be back to lead that conversation. He's exactly. our okay. quintessential AFF extraordinary host so he's out of new york right mm -hmm. he is yeah. he's, he's a, a film journalist film he's journalist fun. and former new york daily news film critic yeah he's, he's great yeah he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great guy he's a yeah. great guy i've had a chance to talk to him a couple times he's but I mean, as i was looking through your features though i mean you've got the, the obviously the opening night and the closing day but uh the aristocrats looked interesting to me <laughs> it's fascinating uh, and and a disclaimer there it's not the one with the animation and the cute little kittens no. okay it's not no. No. <laughs> it's a japanese film yeah 
Um, King Richard, which Patty, you do have a connection to because your sons were the producers on that. Yes, they were. And this is the uh, one of the big Oscar buzz buzzing movies this year. And that's going to only be for the students, you know, that no the, tickets the, available. Yeah, Private. it won't be. The, the oh, is that, is that strictly the student one? It's st strictly yeah, for in the fact, student. I prefer it's, not to really advertise. It's education day. Okay. It's education yeah, day. It's a, so it's a special thing we do with the county schools and they bus in like 700 high school kids. Okay, well, everybody who's listening, go get enrolled in like third grade. And <laughs> come, come check this, come check this Unfortunately, thing. Unfortunately, we will not be selling tickets to the public for right, that. Right, exactly. Right. Um, you know, and but I will, I will say it's actually it's a good thing we're talking about King Richard because you've got the Annapolis Film Society. And if you were a member of that, you were lucky enough to get a sneak peek of King Richard before it hit the theaters mm -hmm. uh, in the Bowen Theater at Maryland Hall back in the fall? November, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it, it was just fabulous. And the Annapolis Film Society is a, I don't know, a spinoff, I guess, of the Annapolis Film Festival. Well, it's, it's part of the festival, but it's a way to continue film culture throughout the year. And we have a partnership with Maryland Hall, who's been amazing in partnering with us to use the Bowen Theater, which is the only DCP theater in Annapolis that's available yeah. for something like this. So, um, it's it's mostly monthly screenings, and if you join the Film Society, it's only seventy five dollars a year to support film in Annapolis, and you get early access, like and some discounts. So, for example, if you were an AFS member this year, you got twenty dollars off your pass, and you got to be able to buy tickets two days before it went on sale to the public today. But also, the Film Society, it, it's. Where our hope is to build the film society. As we build the film society, we're going to be able to provide a lot more programming for people throughout the year. So, monthly screenings and possibly some other interesting conversations. And our film society members may be getting things that other people Don't. won't have an opportunity to get a, get to yeah. see. I mean, you guys have brought some pretty incredible films over the. And I mean, the film society is fairly young. I mean, it's about three, four years, maybe. Well, well we, we right tested the it and then we officially launched it the February before the March of COVID. So then we relaunched it this past October when people felt okay to gather again. Right. But I mean, you had the Jimmy Carter rock and roll president. Yeah. You had the um, the, the Fox News. Um, oh yeah, the, oh, one, the, the know, Roger Ailes. Yeah, the Roger and we had the Bomb rescue show. this year. Yep, and we've had some really uh, good things. And there there were some great movies that uh, you're not going to see in the theaters. Right. That are going to be brought here to us in town, and that's the Annapolis Film Society. You want to go to annapolisfilmfestival.org, and that is right there on top. You'll see the Annapolis Film Society. Uh, 75 bucks, well worth it, well worth it to do that. But, um, you know, we got a little bit distracted, but yeah. features, I mean, and the other one I thought was sounded really neat was uh, yelling fire in an empty theater. <laughs> it has a great so title. That's it, a young, well, well, that's what caught my eye. Right. And that's a very young, um, filmmaker, uh, with a very young, um, approach to telling a story. And some of it feels it, it feels a little handheldy, you know what I mean? It feels a little bit like it was shot on an iPhone at some times. And, but this film is very um, intriguing, and it's intriguing because it's it's actually well written. And for a, a young filmmaker to come out and make a tell a story about young people moving to New York City and relationships, and it, it's what's so great about it is it's honest and it's it's relatable, mm -hmm. and you know it's good storytelling and you know a little craziness in there, but it's I, I think it's a I mean we took it because we felt that this is what independent film should be doing. We should be going after films like that as well as a, a, lot a of little quirky parts. i mean i mean the, the, yeah. the quick synopsis is a wide-eyed girl comes into new york and ends up living with this couple that is dysfunctional exactly and, <laughs> but she and, doesn't and know it at first in that dysfunction she has all these hopes and dreams and then she receives the reality of what life is you know and has to has gets gets um you know hits up against the wall on many different for for many different reasons and i think Watching her and feeling her go through this is is quite a relatable experience. Yeah, look, that was one of my, one of my lists, and I'm starting to make my list now. And as as the schedule starts to come out and be able to see it on the on, director will be there. He'll well, awesome. coming in from New York. Yes, um, but people start to make make your list. Try to figure out what you want to see. What are the must see? I, I've got three columns. The <laughs> you know the the must sees, the really want to sees, and the like. Okay, I'm not going to be really upset if I miss it, but I'd like to see it. Yeah, and. Depending on how the schedule works out, 
Uh, I, that's how I like to do it. But I mean, you've got the features, you've got the documentaries as you do every, every year. Yeah. Um, and we have our big showcases, which are really special this year. Yeah, they're pretty really amazing. Special. We're blown away just by what we're able to offer this year. We're really excited to have people year. come out. I mean, it was a hard year after yep. COVID because a lot of films weren't really yet being made. Right. Yeah. And so, and then the there were a ton of releases difficult. that were supposed to, they wanted to qualify for Academy Awards. So then there was this flurry of releases and then we're in the wave after those releases. That They're already up and streaming or in theaters, so yeah. we, we're not going right. for those. So we're kind of caught with what we have, but we've been able to, to find some really terrific yes. things. Also, you know, just to say our African-American experience, which we do every year, mm -hmm. you know, and we're so proud of that because we feel it's had a big part in blending our communities together, you know, our community here together. And it's a shared experience that everybody has for that. This year, it's Dionne Warwick, Don't Make Me Over. And it's a great documentary. Uh, it involves so many fantastically talented Film, uh, singers, songwriters, musicians, uh, everyone's in it, it in some way, shape, or form. And then her story, which is compelling. So And nobody doesn't like Dionne Warwick. I, how do you not? And when you sit there and listen to that music, it takes you, if, you, if, you, if you're not of that age or ilk, it's still, everybody remembers it. Either their parents heard it yep. or they heard it or right. they're going to know about it and see other Snoop Dogs in it. I mean, everybody's in it. So Mary J, know. Bill Clinton, Stevie Wonder. It's a great film. And to make it a wonderful African-American experience, we were fortunate enough to get Dave Woolley, who's the director and producer of the film. He's coming from Atlanta. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we'll have that, and Chris Haley will do the, the moderation right, of right, that right. Q&A. But, you know, then that's really where you guys do so well in tying in the community, okay? You talked about Chris Haley, okay? He is local. Yep. Uh, he is the nephew of... Alex uh, Haley. Alex Haley, who is the author of Roots and the, you know, with the statue down at the city dock. Yep. And um, you look at the showcases that you do, okay? You've got the African-American showcase, okay? We do have an African-American community here in Annapolis, um, you know, that... That loves you know, film, that, actually. That loves film that we need, we need to embrace. You look... Um, you know, I, I, I heard we have a sailing community and you have a sailing showcase. So apparently there's some boats around here somewhere <laughs> yep. where you bring that community in. We're doing it again this year. And this year it's going to be over at the Jack C. Taylor Auditorium and at the Naval Academy. And yeah, the Jack C. Taylor Conference Center is on Hospital Point. Uh, right across from the cemetery. It's a beautiful brand new building. They cut the ribbon in October and they have a 400 seat 7.1 surround sound theater. We're going to be screening it. So we have a lot of actual military films we're showing there this year too. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, I saw one of the documentaries was the uh, Into Flight Once More, which mm -hmm. seemed kind of interesting was mm -hmm. uh, where they're recreating the, um, you know, the flight over to Normandy. Exactly. And they find they, they're working with these old World War II vets with these younger guys, and they realize there aren't even parts. They're retooling and creating it, and then they have to fly over the ocean to celebrate the 50th anniversary of D-Day. Totally off the, uh, off the topic, but one of my best experiences was flying in a... A bomber that they okay. There's like an organization that builds rebuilds these planes and they fly them around. They brought them to Martin State Airport, and they took us up all around Baltimore. You know, you've got the turret up there and the tail and the nose and everything else. And I brought my son with me, and he's trying to get out of work. And his boss said to him, "said Yeah, but I've never heard a better excuse, <laughs> you know, to, to let to let you go that I'm going up in a bomber over, over, over Baltimore." And that's a wonderful story where they, you know, they've rebuilt the planes. They, you know, retraced the routes. Yeah. And um, you know, so and many it's years like later. engineering mixed with piloting mixed with history. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then the the other one that threw me back to my my youth youth was the uh, the automat. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great hard, yes. hard, 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 hard. I do yeah. totally remember that in New York when my father lived there. You yeah. you go in there and you, it's you know it's a vending machine. It's for like the Carvana of the sixties. Nostalgia 60s, I guess. again. Here we go. <laughs> uh, that automat is really fun and it's, it's so interesting. It's a historical documentary, so you, you're learning about what's happening in the world during that time. Also, you know, so the, and why it's it succeeded tradition. and why it went away and how it was sort of the the beginning of the starbucks world yeah, and all sure. of these other things that was built out of it and so um yeah it's really good and lisa Hurwitz, the document the documentary uh director will be here right and uh, she'll do a q a and so do you, do you have a do you have a director or producer for any of the films that aren't going to be here 
Oh yeah. Like you, no, we have we do. There are a few that uh, can't make it. Some, but... some of the the international films, obviously, people right. aren't here for. Um, we, ha but we have another. We have a few American films that. Oh, yeah. that I was just saying, saying you're hitting all the ones. I'm saying, like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. the director's going to be. Well, there. Yeah. we have um, another nostalgic film called Boblo Boats. Okay. If you're from Detroit, you would know what that was. Okay. <laughs> so um, actually, we. We told the mayor about it, and I think Gavin might want to get some ferry boats like this in Annapolis now. So there were ferry boats that uh -huh. traveled to an, uh, this island in Detroit that they would they would have an amusement park there, and people knew about this, and a lot of performers would perform. In oh, Gavin just heard about amusement park. He was still thinking about Ferris wheels and stuff like <laughs> that. I know, I know. Right. <laughs> so the Bobo boats they tried to they tried to bring them back. They try to resurrect the Bobo boats that everybody knew. So it's narrated by Martha Reeves. Now, that's how many people out there know who Martha Reeves was. And the Vandellas, yeah. remember yeah. them? Yeah. Anyway, um, she narrates the film. But it's a real, it's, we have a lot of nostalgia mixed with new and fresh voices this year. It's really an interesting slate. And, you know, the Bobo boats group is all coming. They're, yes, um, the they'll director, be here. the producer, <laughs> they're coming down. And um, it, it's interesting because D Detroit was, not unlike Annapolis, it also was sort of a divided city. It right. had been for a long time African American and and whites and and Bobola boats kind of brought everybody to. It. They all went to this island, an amusement park. So the African Americans have their stories, their memories, and their their nostalgia about their lives and what it meant to them. And then you know, the, the white um, people have their feelings about how what it meant to them and how they did it after school was out and all the, so everybody has their tales to tell and it's different but it's the same so it's it, it's one of those things that brings us together without realizing it being, brings yeah, us together a little bit slightly different perceptions of the same experience yeah. that you're that you're both experiencing which mm -hmm. is pretty neat yeah um and i know you've got some spotlight films and what is the difference between a spotlight and a feature Feature well, films are just feature films are any narrative film that's playing in the film festival. That's longer festival. than forty minutes. Well, that's longer than forty. But a spotlight meanings we're showing the we're underlining that as saying this is a brand new, fresh new film that's got some buzz attached to it. Uh, Emily the Criminal just came off of Sundance. Uh, Fire of Love was just at Sundance. There are spotlights and okay. the other, and that's not Eight, a, that's 892. a documentary. 892 just came out of Sundance. Okay. So there are big Sundance films that- um, They're hot films. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. just new, brand new. Not and that all of them aren't worthy. It's just that, you know, we want to identify- Those are the buzz ones. These are, these are some of the buzz films that uh, deserve maybe a little extra glance because, um, you know, they're, they've got some attention attached to them. Yeah, just don't, I mean, they we're talking about the different directors and producers and actors and stuff that are coming down here. And, and every year it seems that there's more and more and more uh, that are doing that. And I think it's really kind of a testament to what you two have been done over the last decade. <laughs> you started this you're when you started, this, old, you started this when you were 20, okay? <laughs> you know? We're very young and have lots of oh, yeah, energy. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I mean it, it is a testament. And I mean, one of the things, again, community-wise, and, and these directors and actors and producers are not part of our community, the physical community, but boy, they love to come down here. They love to see our reaction. They do. They do. Um, and you know, they one love of the, our audience. They love our audiences. And you know, you've got the opportunities to talk to these people. They've got the, the copy talks. You've got the uh, panels that are, they're going through. And, and I'm assuming those are all coming back again this year, right? They are. Um, and also if you're all access level, you can visit them in the filmmaker lounge where they hang out. So mm -hmm. coffee talks is at Ram's head this year on West street. And it's 9 to 10 every morning. And we're switching up a couple of the hosts this year. It used to be Emil Galina, but he's doing board president duties <laughs> this year. He's the president of the festival okay. of the board. So um, we're starting off on Friday morning. Joe Newmeyer is going to do Friday's Coffee Talk. Mm -hmm. And then on Saturday and Sunday, we have Christopher Llewellyn Reed, who's a film critic, also uh, Baltimore. You know, moderating our Coffee Talk. And Coffee Talks is really special because... It's a drop in for filmmakers. I mean, we know who's coming, but it's unannounced guests that have something, some tie that ties them together for that day. And it's an intimate conversation where the audience can interact and ask questions over bagels and muffins and coffee and tea, courtesy of Baltimore Coffee and Tea Company, who's been with us for all 10 years. Thank you very much. And it's just so fun to hear about all that 
insider knowledge of Hollywood and how the industry works. So they tell funny stories. They yeah. things that they might not say in a normal Q and A. You know, so it's fun. Yeah, I mean, I mean, one of the great things, and I, I was talking to, I had beers with Joe Barson one night, and we had maybe more than one or two beers, but it was okay. Um, you know, and one thing I said about the film festival that was just so great is that. You know, 10 years ago, I would go to a movie and it was like a, a way to kill two hours. Mm -hmm. And that was the end of it. Okay. I mean, Monday morning, I, yeah. uh, what did I do Friday? I have yeah. no idea what the yeah. heck it was. Uh, the Annapolis Film Festival rolls into town now. Okay. Now it's an experience here. Okay. I'm, 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 you know, skipping yeah. work and skipping school to go to, to do this, but I'm coming out and I'm thinking and I'm talking to everybody that's in line. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'm mad. You know, maybe I'm pissed off. Uh, maybe I'm just still hurting my stomach because I was laughing so hard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I look at the um, little, biggest little farm. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. Biggest there's there's two big and little opposites going in there. But, you know, you've, you've, when I saw that, I was like, okay, I walked down. I said, you know, and I'm not a big tree hugger. I'm like, and maybe I can hug a little bit, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and, yeah. and this is, this is what the film festival does. And a lot of people don't realize that though. It's not just a way to kill a couple hours. Uh, yes, you are going to kill a couple hours, but it is the most rewarding couple hours you're going to kill anyhow, because you are going to be able to think about it. You're going to be able to think things through a different lens, think a little bit differently. You may not have your mind changed. You may be, you know, and, and I, I always think that if, if I come out of films, you know, happy, sad, laughing, angry, um, whatever it may be, you guys have probably done your job pretty well. But that is our job. And that's just because you said all of that tells us that we are on the right track to doing our job because that's exactly what people should be thinking and feeling. We want their minds to be open. We don't want to tell them what to think. Right. We just want to sh offer them. Present something. Pre present and let them go in and experience it and then come out and be open to different ways of thinking than you might have had before. Right. I mean, I think it's broadened a lot of perspectives in this, in this time. If you give it a 10-year scope... We've had some weird things happening in our country, in our communities, in our world, in our world, where I think people have been feeling divided, whether it's mm -hmm. the pandemic and we're isolated or political differences or whatever it is. The festivals always brought everyone together in a way that people have something in common to talk about. They can have opposing viewpoints, but it's right. a very warm and friendly environment. And we, we have someone that works with us that comes from Atlanta and she came to the last live festival before COVID. And we said, okay, you do fest. She does festivals all over the country. And we said, now we want to know you've seen it. What's different about us? She said, this is going to sound really weird, but I felt like I was at a family reunion. And when I walked in, I already knew half of everybody. And I knew I knew the other half by the time I left. And <laughs> well, that's Annapolis. That was a compliment because yeah. it's the way the community has embraced this festival and honored the filmmakers as artists. Mm -hmm. The excitement. It's like Christmas. Everybody's so excited to see what's under the tree. You know, what's what's on mm -hmm. the slate. And it's the interactions where we have really intelligent audiences and the filmmakers are always amazed at just the level of engagement and the discourse and the questions and the conversation and the approachability. Like people really want to talk to the artists and they love that. That's, that's why they spent, you know, years of their lives making these films to get it back. Well, our panels this year are, I mean, people love the panels. They pop in there. They try to see what, what's going to be discussed this year. So this year we have, we have the writer's room, so we're going to have some writers who do feature narratives on that panel talking about what that experience is like. And then we're going to have um, something called Pitch Perfect, which people are going to learn. Oh you God, want to learn how to pitch? Great panel. You want to pitch an idea? You want to know exactly the the the. the technical aspect and the and the um, editorial aspect of pitching a good idea to somebody we're going to have panelists and does, experts does that take over about. with the the shorts pitch it's it's different because the shorts challenge well let me first of all the, the pitch perfect is going to be the panelists are going to tell their audience what the key elements of a good pitch is all about and then at the end or toward the end of the hour we're going to let some people who have put their name in the basket who want to pitch, pitch before that, just on the spot, pitch before that panel and get some just open critiquing right then and there. And I think this is going to be really fun for everybody. The Shorts Challenge, which is an organized scenario where we actually choose five, select five pitches well, it's, it's that have jury. come in. It's jury. We have we have we have a panel on the stage. They jury it. They they question the the um, presenter 
they, this presenter has a certain amount of time. They have to pitch their idea. They're asked questions by the, uh, by the panelists on the stage, and then the audience votes, and then the jurors take their vote, but then they go and decide who's going to win. And then they get some funding for the to package, help yeah. the production well, package. Yeah, so this pitch perfect, I mean, I could go in and just as a yeah, non film exactly. goer or film industry Absolutely. person and just pitch an idea. Absolutely. So I can walk out of there and be like a producer. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. Anyone who had any <laughs> what the idea is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyone who has any natural curiosity, that's like those Friday panels are industry panels and a lot of the filmmakers attend to hear, mm -hmm. hear la the latest things, but right. it's for everybody. And we've seen a big increase in the attendance of the panels since the first year. Um, people are really fascinated by this process of it, filmmaking. It also, our, we also are going to do the music makers, which is about mu putting music into film and how that happens. And, you know, we're going to have some people on there discussing that, some musicians, some composers. And then we are going to do, um, we always do some version of this, but uh, to to screen or not to screen, to, to stream or not to stream, uh -huh. uh, which is about basically the business of the business. What's happening? Are you going theatrical? Are you going on streaming? What makes the difference? Why would you choose this? Who's looking at what? Who's looking at that? You know, it's yeah, a and complicated what's the, what's the scenario. Model? What's the best choice for your filmmaker for your distribution route? What do you make the most money? How do you going to pay for, how are you going to pay for your film? It's, it's not so, the same for every well, film. Well, it's you know? so funny how the entertainment industry has really changed. I mean, you know, 30 years ago, I mean, what the hell was streaming? You know, it Amazon, wasn't. Netflix. There Three years <laughs> ago, it, it was different. Right. Yeah. And, but, you know, I, I know I've talked to a couple of different bands that have come through at Ram's Head and, and they're like, yeah, we, we don't really look into tour to make money. Okay. We're not the Rolling Stones. Okay. They need a couple extra hundred million dollars. They just go on a tour and they're, they're set. Um, but they're actually going to create albums and they're going to tour to support the thing to, they're hoping to be picked up by a Netflix for a, you know, for a theme for a movie, for a theme for a TV show or something like that. Yeah. And as you said, I mean, there are some people that are actually developing films specifically, you know, no, I, I I'm going for the YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. you know, you can, you can keep bow tie cinemas and you can keep AMC and everything else, but I want, uh, I want the YouTube. I want right. the, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a different, it, it's a different time and people have different ideas about certain things. And when people create films now, a lot of them are saying, I'm, I'm basically creating this film because it's a, it's a Netflix thing or it's, a, it's for Amazon or it's for Hulu. They, they go into it with that mindset. Others are saying, totally theatrical. I only want this on the big screen, you know? And then there are those who have a project and they don't know where it falls. They, they're, they're, they're completely up in the air. They say, we're going to see what the industry feels about this. And then they go through those motions of getting it kicked to here, it kicked to there. And, and they learn a lot about what's happening in the business. So we're going to have that conversation, which That's is cool. going to be interesting too. That's I cool. think well, a lot of people will be interested. The, ven the venues we're talking about this year, and it seems a little bit more walkable to me, but Maryland Hall, one and two, we'll say the, the main yeah. theater upstairs and the Bowen Theater downstairs. Yeah. And um Despite the chairs, I kind of like the Bowen Theater down down on the lower level better. It's a little bit more intimate. I think the sound's a little bit better. But Annapolis Elementary School is one of them. Yep. Asbury United Methodist, which has some of the most comfortable pews I've ever seen in yeah. any church. It's I mean, really I've, good. Yeah. You know, when, you're, when you're sitting there for two hours, I mean, you, you notice yeah. these things. It's a great venue, actually. It's really a nice venue. It, it, and it's got, it's got great acoustics there mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Ram's Head on stage. And the powerhouse, which is the building that's sort of adjacent to the Graduate Hotel. Right. And then we have the Jack C. Taylor at the U.S. Naval Institute. And right. let me tell you, there's a little, we have to really communicate this to people. We're trying to make this easy mm -hmm. because you have to get on the academy. Right. So we're going to have two buses that will circulate between Gate 5 of the U.S. Naval Stadium gate. to Gate 8 into the U.S. Naval Academy. Okay. So to get to the Jack C. Taylor, you just go through gate eight and make the first left before the bridge. And it's, it's on a hospital point, but the buses are free and you can park all day for $10. If you want to park and go to any other venue on this is Saturday and Sunday, we'll have a courtesy van just circling between the parking lot and Maryland hall and get dropped at Maryland hall. Okay. So, um, we're You're trying to make car. it simple. Just if you go to the Jack C. Taylor, you will have to go through a security check. If you get on the bus, 
that happens when you get on the bus and then you just take the ride and get off the bus and go to the theater. Five okay. minutes later. Yeah. And, and, and as far as security check, the Naval Academy does require a valid, a valid government ID. And there are like a couple states that didn't participate right. with that. And if you're part, if you're in that state, you know what it is. But the yeah. other important things is if you do have a military ID for drive on privileges, there's about 35 to 40 parking spots. And those guys can just, if they're drive military, on. can just right. drive on a park right behind the theater. And I, I didn't tell you this, but there won't be any baseball being played on Saturday and Sunday at Bishop Field. So there's 110 spots if you want to park there and walk across the field. You can walk through the gate. Don't tell anybody I told you that. There, there, there you go. Well, it, obviously, the one that's missing is the key auditorium of St. John's, and that's under construction right now. It is. Also, we didn't mention the Annapolis Elementary School, where we also show a lot of films. And uh, it's it's a good it's a good um, a good theater for us as right. well. And people enjoy films there and Asbury oh, we talked about Asbury right but definitely the elementary so school. the elementary school will be a little tricky because the Hillman garage is coming down before the end of the month they so say. they say <laughs> and there is an event downtown and there is an event on Saturday downtown um, but there are a couple parking lots near the old Fawcett's building now right. um, that will be available and there's paid parking at the school for the day there if people choose to park there as well or you walk you know, you know my, my that's my suggestion is to, to park in either Gotts up, which is up sort of tucked behind where old the old El Toro Bravo was near Rams Head. Right. Knighton, which is out by Metropolitan and Lemongrass uh, or Park Place, which is right on the circle, is another option. Naval and it, Academy. And there's also the one, uh, the State Garage. Exactly. So we're just trying to make it easy for people to get around. And it's a really good deal if you don't want to feed the meters all day to just park for 10 bucks and. And get a you know get a ride back from Maryland Hall. And again, it is a, is a very easy easy walk. I mean, some of them are sometimes are challenging. I mean, and I cursed you guys out one year when it was like ending at Maryland Hall like at eight twenty, and the one down at Annapolis Elementary was starting at like eight. 40. <laughs> you know? I know, it's hard. So, so like, it's hard to decide. <laughs> That's why we're trying to show things twice this year. Is the, the ones we are allowed to show twice, we're trying to show them twice to give people a chance. And the other film I wanted to mention, because um, we want to reach out to all the different communities, is Miha, yes. uh, a film that we think the Latinx community would be really interested in, in um, taking in. And it's going to be at Asbury twice. We're going to show it on, um, on Saturday and on... Friday. So, uh, and it's a film about an immigration, about a family that moved here from Mexico early on and had brought their children, but the one child who was born in this country is the only one that is a, a citizen of the United States. Okay. So she has, now as an adult, she's the one helping the rest of her family as she's also managing young Mexican-American rock, you know, pop singers. And she's, it's really an intimate look at this family and how difficult it is to have somebody, a citizen, and, and the rest of the family not, and how hard it is for her to help her parents get papers. And this is something so relatable to families today. Today. So people should go and see this film. Miha, our community here really needs to know about it. And Isabella Castro, the director, will be here. And it's edited by Annapolis's own Not or sure. but I hope Ora de Kornfeld, who... Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, or a yes, but we're not sure about Isabella who's scheduled. Oh, we don't. Know. Rats. We're, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Try, we're trying. We're trying. So. Well, or, and Aura's from Annapolis. So yeah. So a little Great. shout out to filmmakers from Annapolis. Well, one thing we didn't mention, too, and, and again, this was my education over the last decade, was, uh, you know, I, when I said, oh, you want to go see some shorts? I'm like, well, I'm like Tommy Bahamas or, you know, what, you know, what do we, you know, I mean, I, yeah. yeah. You know, and I honestly had no idea what a shorts shorts was. Aren't uh, they great? Before shorts. we started here, and and I'm a fan. And I, I remember there was one year just before the Oscars, uh, the bow tie, rest in peace, the Harbor Center one that when they when they closed, they put on a, a, yeah, a series of, of, of shorts, of Oscar shorts, shorts Oscar and, and it was sure. it was so cool yeah. because when you're watching the Oscars, you don't see the shorts. You know, yeah, I mean, right. it's, it's and don't. and you know, it can be a 30 second film or I don't even know what the outer definition is, but you know, eight, half hour, maybe yeah, something, something exactly. along those. Well, you, you know, Derek Horn, our director of programming is sort of an expert at shorts. I mean, he yes. is, he's one of the, the really special curators in this area. And 
every year we've been theming the shorts and um, he's just he selects so carefully and and packages them well to, so well together that when you go to a shorts program you really feel the experience of what you've seen you know they've they've been placed together for a reason and so it, it gives more impact to the viewer and this year we have some really really great themed ones well i looked at i mean most of the shorts programs are a time too, and is, yes. that, is that sort of like a nod to Ecclesiastes, or it, no, it's, it's a it's an, a nod to coming out of COVID. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's a it's time, a time to, to to be different. It's a time to get our life back, our love, life, love, Laugh. laughter, okay. learn, you know, listening, and all those things that we missed and mm -hmm. missed out on. So, um, for the first time ever, your two festival directors here have a film in the festival. It's in Shorts Program One, A Time mm -hmm. to Live. What do you think of that? That's awesome. <laughs> We've uh, made a short film that will be in time to live, and uh, we're proud of it. Very good. It's called Don't Hold Your Breath. Very cool. Well, I'll tell you what, the last thing I think we probably need to talk about. Oh, the most, oh wait a minute. So no, sorry. no, there's something else. Go ahead, Lee. Jump on it. For the first time ever, you can just get a shorts pass. Oh, really? Yes. So if you're a shorts fanatic or if that's all you think you can take in during the festival, they're carefully programmed so you can actually see all of the shorts programs, all mm -hmm. seven, 100 bucks. Okay. Not bad. And then you can buy tickets for other movies that you for want the, to see. For, for, extra. A, yeah. for a feature or something. Like that. Well, let's, well, you brought it up. Let's talk about it. Passes, I mean, I'm convinced are the way to go. Uh, if I mean, if, if you're just coming to see one film, buy the ticket and, and go see the film. Uh, you're, as you look through the programming, you're going to see that there's three or four films that you want to see. At that point, then you're going to be going like, yeah, okay, well, this is makes a little bit more sense to have, you know, let's this, this, this maybe take a little bit more time and do six or seven films, or maybe, you know, 60 or 70 <laughs> you know, films, whatever, whatever it works out to. Um, passes, you know, for me and for most people, I feel are the way to go. It is. Um, and again, you can get them at annapolisfilmfestival.org. And the individual tickets are on sale now currently, right? Yes. They're $15 for most shows. If you want to go to, you don't have to have all access to go to Coffee Talks. You can buy a $20 ticket if it's available at the door. But the most important thing about the pass is not only do passes include opening night and the after party, which you can also buy an individual ticket for 50 bucks, but this year, because we're a COVID safe festival, um, if you have a pass, you go get a pre-check, you bring your Vax card and your photo ID and you get checked. And once you're in the system with, as a pass holder, you're good for the weekend. Or your PCR test. If right. Or PCR test in 72 hours. If you're an individual ticket purchaser, you go in the morning and you get, go through that. It takes five minutes, go through the process. You get a wristband for the day. So if you really want to not have too much of a hassle through the weekend, get a pass and just go get checked in. We're going to offer early box office hours before opening night, starting the Monday of the week of the festival, 11 to 7, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Go get your pre-check done, and then you can enjoy everything opening night and not get in that line. Just go. Okay, so let, let's talk about, you said a, a COVID safe festival. So what, what, what is, is COVID? the COVID safety? I mean, we are coming out of this pandemic and a lot of the restrictions are being lifted. Right. And I, will, I, we I, will have a mask mandate. Okay. Yeah. I was, you know, I was at the um, Classic Theater of Maryland seeing Cabaret uh, a couple of weeks ago. And it, it was funny. I walked in and I was, I said, you know, I didn't have a mask. I've, I'm feeling fairly comfortable. I'm like, oh, I saw a bunch of people and I said, what's your policy? So we don't have one. I said, well, you know. They're all wearing it. I'm going to wear it if it makes everybody comfortable. Um, but, but what you know, John, inside, we really feel strongly that we're going to ask for masks because, hey, we need to sell a lot of tickets this year. If these people, if people want this festival to be here to stay, this is a heavy lift to come back to live. Everything costs more. It's been a big challenge, and um, we, need, we need to fill to those safe. seats. So I think we have a lot of some older um, patrons, and I think they're going to be more comfortable. If somebody's just wearing a mask That's sitting next to them. Not, not a problem. But the check-in process, okay. And so if if I, I need approved vaccination or recent PCR test. Yeah. And then I get a wristband that says I'm, I'm good. So then. Yeah, like if you're going to films on Friday, just go Friday morning before to Maryland Hall, get checked in, and you get a band that says Friday on it. So every time you go to a movie, you don't have to recheck in. You just, you have your just band once. for Okay, can I check in individually in a movie if I bought an individual ticket to. You mean at a different venue? Yeah. No. Okay, so if, if we I, don't have the bandwidth or the personnel, okay. unfortunately. Well, that's, I'm, I'm just thinking for people that are yeah, listening. Right. So if I bought one ticket to see one movie and it's, you know, 
Tuesday or you know, Saturday night, I've got to go to, down at Green Street or uh, Annapolis Elementary. Mm -hmm. I've got to go to Maryland Hall and get checked in. That whatever in that at some point at some point that day. Yeah. So I can do it. You can go the, the day or... before, and I think, and get checked in. I don't think that's yeah, an issue. Yeah, no, it's not. Okay. You could go. You could, in theory, with seventy-two hours, get checked in. If you had different individual tickets, okay. just take them to the box office with you, and okay. They'll, they'll so get you want your pass holder, though? Then you check in you're once. You're done. Boom! You're, you're done. done. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Well, we we just really want to be. Uh, a safe festival where everybody's comfortable. And at the parties where there's food, I mean, yeah. it's optional. People want to wear their mask, but we're sure. not expecting people to to do that. And and so they can they can have it both ways at this festival, sure. but feel safe. Sure. And we're going to be very guarded. The, I just want to say one other thing before okay. we you wrap up here, is that I just don't want people to forget about our Spotlight films, because we really do. We started to mention them, but Emily the Criminal with Aubrey Plaza, she's fantastic in it, and it's really, really good film. That's Saturday night at Mary Maryland Hall. We have uh, 892 on Friday night, which is uh, a very, very powerful film that's also out of Sunday and relevant and relevant today. Um, and then we that's based on a true story. And then we have Fire of Love, which is the documentary, very, very popular film about the volcanologist couple who are chasing volcanoes around the world. It's, it's footage and you've never seen. It's just incredible. And their story. So those are three spotlights that, you know, along with our opening and closing day films that <laughs> Our, our also, seats. guys, we never talked about the Jewish experience, oh, which is a, a staple yeah, exactly. of our showcases. And and this year, this really year, it's special. huge. Um, so it starts with a bagel uh, and lots of lots breakfast. Does, as they all do. <laughs> so this year it'll be under the tent on mm -hmm. Sunday morning, outside at under Maryland the tent Hall. at Maryland Hall. And it's 9 to 10. And then uh, after Bagels, Locks, and Coffee from Baltimore Coffee and Tea Company, people go into Maryland Hall, Main Auditorium. And the first film is called uh, um, uh, Three Minutes, A Lengthening. It's a very fascinating film. It's about three minutes of found footage from a village in Poland pre-Holocaust. Mm -hmm. So at the time, a lot of people were... Um, Nobody really had film cameras. So somebody appears in this town square with a film, you know, a film camera and everybody's going, hey, photograph, you know, right. film me, film me. And it's a sea of faces of children and parents and adults all outside of this They're temple. Coming They're out coming out of, coming like out of synagogue. the synagogue. synagogue. And families. Nobody knows who they are. So the film is the mystery of unraveling who were these people and what happened to them. It goes back and forth on the same three minutes oh. of film over this hour-ish film. And, but it's the... The thing is, it just moves in on different faces, and then we're trying to explore who these people are and what their relationship was to anybody here in this country. I mean, it's fascinating. And then the second half of it, when that film's over, we're doing another film by Monica Levinson, who was the producer of Beirut uh, yeah. that came here before, and she's a big producer out in L.A., and she has turned the camera on her family for 12 years, and this is the footage that came out of an American Jewish family over a period of 12 years, and they're, they're at the ta Thanksgiving, from Thanksgiving to Christmas to bar mitzvahs, to, to actual interviews talking about people who came over from those families during the Holocaust and why they came and, and how they got here, and so what you're seeing is like two sort of old home movies that were this these people who just were kind of wiped off the earth and never had a chance to have families and and live and be there and this family who 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 actually came here and lived and had a life and yeah it's, it's a, just a, a wonderful pairing. it's a wonderful pairing when you see them as a double feature and it's it, we we just haven't had anything quite like that before so we're very excited about yeah. it and um the Jewish experience is just always, from the beginning, a big part of our festival. So I just didn't well, want to well, leave it has, that out. Again, again, with the different experiences, I mean, it brings everybody. I mean, you got the tree hugger experience, which is the environmental experience. Okay. I mean, with it's, biggest it's, little it's, farm, the return. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, you've, you've got that. You've got the Jewish experience, the African-American experience, the sailing experience. So, I mean, it, it really does not give a nod to the community that is an app. And that's what we try to do. And do not, we haven't really said anything about sailing, but Gary Jobson will be back hosting, and there are going to be a couple of shorts, longer shorts in that in that thing instead of one film. And it's it's great. It's, it's really it's terrific. wonderful. That impossible. And, How can you have a longer short? Well, I mean, it's about 35 <laughs> minutes long. You know? That's funny. So that's a longer short. <laughs> but, you know, the other thing I really feel like we need to say is that 
our premier sponsor this year is the Arts Council of Anne Arundel County and the Maryland State Arts Council, without which been the festival fight. would have gone away. It's right. just that simple. Mm -hmm. It was through emergency funding that we could get during COVID that they sustained us along with all of our dedicated, you know, patrons and sponsors. You know, it was really hard. And without them, we, we really would have gone away. So yeah, they deserve a huge, you know, we owe them a huge debt of gratitude for what they did for us. Well, this has been a labor of uh, love for you guys for, I, I don't want to say 10 years because I know it was many, many years. Is that planning. what this is? <laughs> um, but I, I've been trying I, to well, figure I it mean, out, I mean, John. I mean, I, okay, okay, okay. I rolled up to your office here. There are no Bentleys or Rolls out front, okay? Uh, this is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on a, like a, a rickety old, chair. rickety old chair. I yep. get the card table, okay? So, I mean, this is not a, Sendly, Sendly and Patty to retire in Tahiti <laughs> type of event. It sure ain't. <laughs> um, that's what your sons are for, doing the Oscar, Oscar winning yeah. movies. But, yeah. um, you know, this has, you know, been such a labor of love um, for obviously something that you love as well as the town that you love. And, you know, I will speak on behalf of who I think is probably many, but thank you. Yeah. Well, we appreciate that. We really we do. We really do. do. We did it for the community, John. So I, mean, I don't know what people think. I mean, Patty and I are filmmakers, but we really don't get any personal benefit professionally out of Doing the it. festival. Right. We actually bring a lot of our professional context to the festival. Right. Right. But we did this to share it and to strengthen the fabric of this community at a time when things were feeling yeah. Yeah. Well, divided. Well, a question for you. Both of you guys are film buffs at the most basic level, okay? So take off your producer hat and just leave on your film buff hat. I want you to answer me just one question, okay? You see the slate of films this year. Oh, don't ask Okay, <laughs> what is, Lee, the one film, okay, now, and Patty, I know you're gonna go, oh, well, no, it's this and this and this and this <laughs> and this. I've talked to you plenty of times. I know that you're not gonna be able to do it to one, but what is, what is the one film as a film buff that if you were coming into Annapolis that you would see? Yeah, I can't just name one film. There you go. You know, you know it, it why? Can't. You know why? Because I, films are different. They have a personality. They have a style. They have history or something experimental or futuristic. They're all different. It's the kaleidoscope of all of it that's so wonderful. It's a little taste of everything. It's a buffet, but not a cheap buffet. A very curated it's also our, so when are, you, when are you announcing these are our premiere? babies <laughs> by the way these are our babies they are and and these filmmakers don't deserve to be one called out over another you know i mean the fact is they've That's... all worked hard they've all made it into the festival and that means they're all worth our attention okay that's fair that's fair i'll, I'll, I'll buy and that. we are grateful to all artists that want to come and spend a few days here with everybody in our hometown and share the magic of what they've done and the stories behind it and the story on the screen. Right. And I know some of the things that you do is, I mean, it's a glo it's a global industry, filmmaking and stuff right. like that. I mean, uh, personally, I can't stand subtitles. That's why I don't go to the opera and, right. <laughs> and everything else. But do we, have, do we have foreign or international films that are represented this year? No, we, we do. We, yes. Um, we have a wonderful Irish film called The Bright Side. It's about a young girl who's a stand-up comedian she's actually a total train wreck uh, and then her life takes a sudden turn when she finds out she has breast cancer and finds this irreverent group of uh, other breast cancer survivors and patients that she um, begins to hang out with and she really discovers what's important it's, it's a very quirky it's a quirky film it's quirky and it's heartfelt it's the bright side the bright yeah, side. The bright side. Um, we also have, we just have, we have some really good um, foreign films this year. And we have The Aristocrats, which is a Japanese film that we mentioned. We have The Rosemaker, which is oh, a that. really fun, um, satirical French film. Uh, and that I think people will enjoy a lot. It's about a rose farm in France and some some ex-convicts that come to help when they're, when they're sort of falling by the wayside financially. They hire these ex-cons to come and <laughs> help them, fun. you know, bloom the roses, so to speak. So <laughs> it's it's quite fun. And um, that's, a, that's a good we one. We have Neighbors, and, which is an amazing story. Um, it takes place, is that Sy Syrian, right? Yeah. And... Um, that's just relationships, getting along, living in a community, and we, different, yeah, different aspects of the community. And then we also have um, 
the Blind Ambition film, which is Zimbabwe. Zimbabwean sommeliers Great. competing in a world wine competition. So we have some really wonderful looks and sneak peeks at other places in the world. The other one is Valiant Hearts, which is a French film that takes place north of Paris, and it's about a group of kids that are secreted away um, during, during the war and into a uh, museum where somebody is trying to move them through the woods to safety. It's, it's, Great. F- it's just incredible, the film. And, yeah. and the, you know, the other thing is we've also, there's an American film that's in our festival. It's very much millennial-ish, you know, called Glob Lessons. <laughs> and it's, it's a really good platonic, it's a story about a platonic relationship between two very different kind of, a man and a woman, you know, one's gay and, and one's one is, it's it's a it's just a really interesting story about a platonic relationship and a road trip, and I should say no more. And they're all coming. The producers, the directors, the and the act, the stars, and the directors are the same. And they're they're in, they're coming and they're in the movie. So. Looking forward to it. Parties again. You mentioned a couple times. We got the oh, opening night party and the last night. Yeah. Pala Pleasers is back. Thank you, Sally Kaiser and Amy and Eric and right. and everybody. Um, we love them over there. They do an amazing job. We also have uh, our official uh, vodka of opening night is Tito's handmade vodka. But this year we've also added a new sponsor, Rabbit Hole Bourbon and Rye, uh, as well as Director's Cut from the Francis Ford Coppola line of wines, oh. and featuring. For the pre-party, our Sophia sparkling wine, and then on the after-party, we're also uh, treating everyone to some forward brewing, beer. Oh. Yeah. So cool. that, and, and remember the chocolate and the and the uh, British-themed the- menu. <laughs> And yeah, yeah, it's just going to be. It's going to be a, a, a tribute to uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You know? That's awesome. Well, and I mean, again, the same same types of party. You got the opening night, and and then we have the party. we have the uh, Saturday bash, night bash, Saturday night bash, which is always a lot of fun. That's going to be the graduate, uh, right? Be at the graduate. Yeah, that's where you guys go. Oh God, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a, that's a that's a lot of fun, and a lot of our filmmakers that are still here are that go there, and it's just a that, great. That is, I, I found the the best way to deal like like buy the passes for the festival. That's the best way to fest. The best yeah. way to do that Saturday night bash because it's so crowded and so crowded. You go up to the bartender, you get his eye, and you say, "Look, dude, just sell me a bottle of wine, not the glass." And he's like, "I'll get in trouble." I said, "I got an extra 20. And he says. <laughs> It's worth it. <laughs> and, and, and we'll walk away with a bottle of wine and, and like four glasses and, 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 are, and, and we're great. And you're, you know? you're set to go. And we're, and we're actually going to probably have some more bartenders this year. Things yes, are going to move, I think so. move more quickly. So that's always, that's we're going to open up onto the patios this year with the heaters going. And so we're going to be in. That's, in, nice. Um, that's nice. And I've heard it's supposed to be beautiful weather. So that's. Gonna I think be it's going to be nice. I do too. I think this is going to be the best party weekend this town has seen in quite a while. I, I, I don't doubt that. What is the situation on passes? I know that you've got a limited number of passes. We do. We still, they're, they're selling very well. I know that. But I mean, do we, I mean, should people go buy pass? I mean, there are there passes to be I I wouldn't wait. There's a lot of promotion going on. There's a lot of, um, and you know what? Our circle has expanded during COVID. We saw a real uptick in Baltimore, Northern Virginia, and DC viewers. So they may be wanting to come in for the festival. So I wouldn't wait. Get your passes now. I mean, and then, you know, for those who aren't getting passes, then start really Really looking at the at the slate and and deciding what you want to see and get your tickets because yeah. keep in mind too that and and you said uh the naval academy has what 400 seat theater mm-hmm. oh yeah uh maryland hall has like six well I upstairs think. with the upstairs it's 700 seven but, nineteen yeah, with so, everything i mean that's and that's the largest venue that we have right it is um so i mean you look at the bowen theater is like three something maybe no maybe it's two, 180 okay so i mean small Get your tickets. If there's yeah. a film that you want to get see, right. um, get it because I mean, they, it could very well sell out. And I mean, that's, I say part of the beauty of it, but I mean, you know, sometimes you do get into a film and it's full up and it's like, pull out the program and like, there you go. Quick, let's bolt over here. Cause this is getting ready to start and go to a different one. If you're on the fence about whether you should go to this festival or not this year. Yes. The answer is yes. Go take it, take the step and come back with us because we need you. We need the community to be there so we can continue on. And we're going to deliver a safe and a fabulous 
and a fun festival. So you don't want to miss this. But you do it every year. You're like the Hotel California. I remember the first year. It was like, okay. And I, he came here and said, okay, shit, I'm done for the rain. You know, I'm, I'm here for the duration. You know, Come in and you'll never go out. You know, it's, 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 it's not a big deal. All right. As we wrap up again, the dates of this festival are March 31st to April 3rd. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And this year, I am vowing to myself to make it to the best of the fest. I have not made it in nine years. Oh, my you gosh. Have to, you well, have to. well, you haven't made it in seven years. because you know, Some was, people say it's um, their favorite thing. But, you know, you know what? It, I, get, I, get, I get to Sunday, and I hit a wall. And I'm like, I am exhausted. How do you think we feel? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to put a we Starbucks or something. Or something. Put a coffee rolls shop rolls somewhere in between. But, uh, you know, it's, so I, I am going um, to try to do that as well. But this, the dates are there. You can get your tickets and passes at AnnapolisFilmFestival.org. And before we wrap up, one real quick question. I want to see if you can confirm or deny a rumor. But I had heard that Clooney and Pitt might be coming on <laughs> April 1st, which is April Fool's Day. They're known to be pranksters. <laughs> so have, have, have we gotten to the level where... Clooney and Pitt are just coming to check out a flick. April Fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we 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 can hope. We'll give it. We'll give it near fifteen. We'll see if that's it. If anybody mm-hmm. lets us know they're coming, we'll let you know when we know. <laughs> Lee Anderson and Patty White, you are the co-founders and the co-directors of the Annapolis Film Festival. Again, coming into town March 31st through April 3rd, 70 plus films. They are, go to the website, check them out. You've got some little synopses that are coming up. The uh, program guide will be up pretty soon as well as that's, Mm -hmm. uh, I think they were furiously proofreading it out front before we came back here. Um, And it's coming down so quick and I'm so excited for it. Um, and again, you know, thank you too for your vision to to say, hey, I think this could work in Annapolis because damn it all, it has for a decade. And uh, I'm looking forward to number 10 and everything else that follows it. Thank you, John, for always supporting the festival and yeah. helping us explain this crazy endeavor to everyone else. Being a bit of our cheerleader and keeping all the fans out there, <laughs> you know, up to date on what's going on. And we hope to see everybody at the movies. Thank you for joining us to learn a little bit more about the films coming up to the 10th Annual Annapolis Film Festival. Remember, passes really the way to go, and individual tickets can now be obtained at AnnapolisFilmFestival.org. This is John Fernay, and I'll see you at the movies. Some that you recognize and that you hardly even heard of. People who Suffered and struggled for fame Some who succeeded and some who suffered in vain Rudolph Valentino looks very much alike And he looks up ladies' dresses As they sadly pass him by But please don't tread on dearest Marilyn She's not very tough She should have been made of iron or steel But she was only made of flesh and blood You can see all the stars as you walk down Hollywood Boulevard Some that you recognize and that you hardly even Fantasy world of celluloid villains and heroes Because celluloid heroes never feel any pain And celluloid heroes never